Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Now, it's amazing when you're younger, you hear that you should be staying fit and eating right. And yeah, maybe you work out and you know, watch what you're eating a little bit as you get older. What a game changer it is if you hadn't taken care of yourself. And even if you reasonably have, how your mobility, even just stretching is so much harder. And that's why it's so important to, to be mindful of all of this. Functional fitness is what we're going to delve into today with somebody who owns a great wellness center, creating change in Largo, Florida. And that's just, just a piece of what he offers, cranial sacral therapy, massage. I'm talking about Mark Hayward. And he's back with us. Welcome. How are you doing? Great. Thanks for having me, Steve. It's good to have you, you back. Uh, you said something, you said something uh, that kind of I can relate to. And, and my niche has seemed to be is folks hitting middle age or in middle age, a little senior, that may not have had a history of being fit. You know, they didn't go into gym. They just, it wasn't on their radar. And now sure. they're starting to feel that tightness and that stiffness and that inability to move well and the things that activities that they, you know, used to do easily, they can't do as well anymore. They're just less enjoyable. And uh, a lot of what I do is helping folks like that transition into a lifestyle where fitness is a part of their you know, routine. Yeah. So yeah, yeah it's, that's my niche. Good for you. We need you. <laughs> it's it has to become a lifestyle, and I've seen it in two years of sitting more, doing podcasts. I've seen a big change in degradation in my mobility, where I have to be mindful to now stretch and even just you know doing squats or knee bends is like, hmm, wow, <laughs> that's a that change there. But then I hear from friends you know around the same age that are now, sure, they go to the gym, but they'll have a goal. Like I, I have one friend, he does 80 push-ups a day, and he's been doing that for a long time, or just to change it up, certain number of squats. And you don't even need a gym for that. You're just moving and staying mobile. Uh, but I, I don't believe that we put the emphasis on what happens to our bodies as you get older and how even just stretching becomes a chore where it should be just easy. I'm just going to stretch. Hey, no problem. Initially, yeah, When you, if you haven't been doing it, if it hasn't been part of your routine, and then you get into it, and this is an obstacle that I see a lot of folks facing. It is a chore. It does kind of hurt. It is uncomfortable. Like sometimes stretching for somebody who's not, you know, familiar with stretching can feel like a workout, you know, just getting into the setup position. So that initial hump, can be very challenging and uh it's really important for folks to push through because mm -hmm. the body's always working for us it's always on our side um and you know the time it takes for you to get over that initial hump for some folks can be you know two three sessions it could be maybe a week two weeks but at some point it gets easier and if you continue the body is now adapting and it's just it's just not that difficult it's the, the really the real important part is getting through that cycle, just like anything new. You know, yeah. it's tough at first, and after a while, it's not. Um, and motion is motion is lotion. I've heard that heard uh, said many, many times. You know, just mm. moving, just you know, we are our modern day society has created this sedentary lifestyle and make things just. We're, we're victims of convenience, you know, it's just yeah. more and more convenient for us to do stuff without moving and it's detrimental to our health and physical well-being and our emotional and uh, spiritual well-being too, because we're, we're meant to be moving. We're not meant to be still. So it's, it's crucial that we we're doing a routine of, of, of some sort of movement. Um, and what I do, how I got into the whole fitness thing was, you know, I, I was, you know, originally a uh, massage therapist. That was how I started out, as we, as we talked about. And, uh, you know, I started to notice patterns and becoming limited in what I could do for certain chronic conditions. And uh, it became quite clear. I've always been working out. I've been working out since I was 14. So it's always been part of my life. Um, 
but I what I became aware of was that reoccurring incidents of injuries, and sometimes it wasn't even injuries, it was just chronic pain conditions. Um, there was a weakness. We could isolate and find a certain weakness. Well, when I do this, I can't do this. And, you know, this hurts. I'm like, okay. So that's how I got into the whole arena of personal training and developing sort of routines to address very specific, specific weaknesses. And that's kind of my thing. It's, it's along the lines of corrective exercises. So it's a good marriage with the massage. You know, sure. if, if I'm working on a client and, you know, after a few sessions, we get them in a good management position and they're feeling good and you're able to do their thing. And then it comes back. It's like, okay, now we gotta, we gotta find out what, what's, where's the weakness? Cause more times than not, there's a there's a weakness, there's a muscle that's just not firing and it's not mm -hmm. it's not playing well with the other guys. And that's that's what I offer. I offer uh, testing, strength testing, uh, movement, functional movement screening, um, and other you know mobility and uh, flexibility testing to really narrow in on where the limitations are, and then apply very specific therapeutic activities in the form of exercises, mobility drills, stretching, uh, even self-massage techniques um, catered to that client and to that issue to get that situation balanced and hopefully get it to join in with the other muscles. And so they're, they're in a more functional state and they can do what they, they want to do. Mm. With your massage training, and I guess it's your knowledge of physiology, um, what a perfect marriage, you know, when you work with somebody on the fitness level. And it, it sounds like you laser in to somebody's body to figure out what's going on so you can pinpoint and do exactly what's going to work for them as opposed to just a, a generic stretch. It's super cool, man. It's super cool because, you know, as a therapist, we were intimately involved with muscles. We really get into them. Um, we, you know, we are trained on them, but in the field, you know, through touch and experience, you know, I'm, I'm 15 years now, thousands, thousands, tens of thousands of sessions, you know, I got a pretty good knowledge of how muscles are supposed to feel and move. And so when you're able to pinpoint uh, a dysfunction and then you attach it to a physical activity to improve that along with the work that you're getting from the massage therapy, man, it's a game changer. It really is. It was, it's, it's quite amazing to, and it's very rewarding when I ha hear folks coming in that years suffering, years suffering with this ongoing issue. And they've been all over town, saw all kinds of specialists, specialists. And, uh, you know, it just keeps reoccurring. And then after just a few sessions, um, a few sessions of massage, a few sessions of the physical training, it's gone away. And they're wow. just elated. It's just super rewarding. It's fantastic. It really is. What's going on in our bodies as we age that's preventing us from or making, say, stretching challenging, like what within our knees? And I'm, I'm let's factor out people that have chronic conditions just in general. And when, what's going on with our muscles? Um, you know, those basic stretches. What, what, peel back the skin layers. What's going on there? Yeah. Well, we touched on this before, you know, physiology wise, it's just, I believe it's just, you know, wear and tear, the integrity of the tissues, the cells, they're just not as buoyant. They're not, they don't have that bounce back, you know, when you're, you're young and everything is flowing good, everything's clean, you know, I mean, you can see it just on your skin. You know, when, when I work on really young people, you know, their skin, I look at their skin, I'm like, man, I remember my skin looked like that. You know, it's just the cells themselves. It's just so fresh. And, and so mm. a lot has to do with, you know, uh, fluid movement, lubrication. You know, our cells need that constant flow of nutrients, bringing nutrients and removal of waste. And that is in itself slows down as we age. That process slows down. That's why as we do age, things like massage, things like physical activity and movement help encouraging that flow really makes, makes a world of difference. I mean, it's just simple wear and tear and integrity of the um, cellular structure 
it's just not as you know it's not just it's not hitting all it's not firing all cylinders mm. so it's, it's not a bad thing where we lose out on that you know we gain an experience and, and know-how and you know find that nice balance is pretty cool when you're able to you know work on your limitations physically and bring that up and still work on yourself on a spiritual sense and you know mm. know how of how to function in our world and our society when you're able to marry those two in a nice balance you know we're, we're, it's a pretty cool place to be so you know we should yeah. get down on we should age gracefully there's something to be said about aging gracefully i also feel that the awareness within your body is important knowing your limitations what feels this way it's like i had a very minor ankle issue that was a concert venue and i think i stepped a little side sideways it wasn't bad at all just you know, a little discomfort and i went to the gym last week and i'm like all right let me let me uh let me just stretch out the calf maybe you know just you know, whatever wasn't a good idea i just aggravated it more so now i just chilled on it uh three days ago uh it was a uh, eight minutes played football in a parking lot Good for you. <laughs> Except. <laughs> and it was three minute hold. So no tackle, but you got to hold, you know, your opponent for three seconds. And then that, that counts as a tackle. And sure. I'm in that position. I'm holding. We're about, you know, a minute, a uh, second and a half in. And I find myself starting to pivot over on that ankle. I'm like, I'm not going there. So I went, I intentionally went the other way, you know, wound up with that. Not a big deal, but it was, wow. you know, hit the curb, but my point here is I knew that was a bad idea going that way. I'm going to go that way and let the chips fall where they may. Um, Cause I think I would have really, really aggravated that, that ankle, which is, yeah, it's fine. It's yeah. fine. You know, it just needs a little attention. My point here is knowing what your body needs, what it feels like changes, you know, if you, you know, during a click in your knee, like hmm, be mindful of that. You know, if you're going to do a stretch, um, I wonder if everybody is. I'm. I'm. I feel like I am. I'm plugged in, <laughs> but I wonder if other, others like aren't. Are. Sounds like you are. You're, you're. You're attached to your body. You're. You're involved with physical activities. Um. You. You probably have a history of that. And when you not do not a that, lot though. Not a lot. I. I appreciate that, but not a lot, unfortunately. <laughs> Over the years, when you do activities like that, you develop that awareness. Um, okay. For, for, for safety reasons. But, yeah, yeah. you know, at the very core of what I do, pretty much essentially everything that I do service wise is trying to create for my clients and develop that mind body connection, the awareness, mm. being present with their body and the ability to listen. Mm. Um, it is so powerful and magical when we are aware of our bodies when we can stop still and listen there's a share a, 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 a exchange of information that happens pretty much throughout the mm. universe but intimately with our bodies our bodies can tell us what we need our bodies are always our bodies are number one ally it's the only thing that will never leave you Mm. All right. Everything else around will come and go, but your body is there for you through thick and thin 24 seven. So it's pretty important that you develop a very intimate relationship with our body. And unfortunately, many, 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 many of us are disconnected. We take our bodies for granted. I can't yeah. tell you how many times I'll, I'll work on somebody's leg it seems like we're very disconnected through our legs the further we get from our head the more disconnected we are yep. <laughs> and they're like oh my god i didn't even know i had that like they had no idea that this thing happening down here because they're not that the, the connection is not there sure and a lot of that that's part of built into my work with every service that i offer and in fact um, I developed, you know, it just kind of organically happened, this program, because as I became more aware of um, how exercising, you know, effective exercising works and make, brings more functionality to people, I became aware that certain parts of our body are, are core centers for, for good fitness. 
Um, so this program, the foundation fitness program that I developed is a three-phase program. The first phase uh, is called deep core activation, and it deals with reconnecting to our true core muscles. Are you familiar with our, what our true core muscles are? I would I imagine. You, the core muscle, what would you say? Um, well, I'm going to center around the core. So I'm going to say back muscle, your stomach muscle. I'm going to say to some degree, you know, even your glutes, because <laughs> okay. there, so, there's some support going on there. Okay, so those are superficial and peripheral core muscles. Okay. You're correct. They're not part of your core. They're in the core area, but they're actually the surrounding extended peripheral core muscles. The deeper core muscles, the ones that get initially activated from your child when you learn how to move and sit up and walk, are deeper pelvic floor, transverse abdominis, multifidi in the back, you know, diaphragm, all this stuff that creates this, what they call interdominal pressure that solidifies that foundational uh, stability in our deep cavity, low cavity area. And those are muscles that go to sleep. And um, mm -hmm. a lot, many times they're completely inactivated. So my phase one is just reattaching mentally, retraching your nervous system, turning them on, and then learning how to fire them at will, and then connecting them with the other core muscles. In other words, if you're just walking or going, picking up a basket or something, they're shut off. So the muscles that are doing that, supporting you through that activity is your back, your hips, hopefully your glutes, that would be nice. But that's what time to time, you know, it goes on and on. It leads to the pain and the discomfort and the instability. Whereas when you learn how to squeeze your pelvic floor, how to engage your low abdominal muscles as you're doing these activities, and in time, they take over and they create that stability, hence taking the pressure off your hips and the low back. So that's phase one, which requires a lot of mental mind-body connection which is, seems to be the biggest challenge for most of the people I work with. Phase two um, is the pelvic, uh, pelvic balance and stability. This is the title of it. So we do a whole lot of testing. We try to find our limitations in that area. You know, what's not firing? What's not working well with the other guys? Where's your mobility issues? Lots and lots of testing, again, to zero in on what do we need to target initially? And then combining all those muscles, there's 17 different muscles that cross the hip joint. So it's a lot of, lot of room in there for error. So there's a lot of work in that. It's a very complex phase, phase two. Phase three is to show the girdle integrity. It's just another extension of how we move, a, 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 um, a hub of how we move, core, hips, shoulder. And that's also a very complex, um, it can be a very complex uh, phase. However, the majority of people that come in that do the foundation fitness, if they get through the phase three, they all seem to have the same issues. It's interesting. And I think it has to do with our sitting and our lack of movements. They all come in with very similar issues. So it's usually sort of a template targeted um, uh, session when working with a lot of people. But again, it's just dealing with all those muscles that uh, keep the the uh, all of the humerus bone in the right position and allowing rotator freedom of rotator movement allowing shoulder scapular movement so many times that lack of movement creates all kinds of rips and tears and labrum tears you know the inability to just raise your arms up without arching your back that all leads to low back stuff so these areas, if you get balance and stability in these areas, core, hips, and shoulders, it tends to kind of trickle out to the rest of the body. So that's that's how that phase, or why that phase was developed. And it's, so far, it's been pretty effective. What I'm learning here is if you ignore certain muscles, you try to make up with for it with other ones, but you're yeah. you're on the path to some potential injury. Oh, and, and the hip and the, the pelvic area, um, 
You should have mentioned that with the core because I struggled with that one. It's I, I I think they're called hip abductors. You know the machine at, at the at the gym. There's not a lot. I I'm trying to find exercises for that because I find that that's you know that that's where my weakness is within my core. Yeah, for for most people, yeah. and and unaware of it too. You know, I mean, everybody knows. Right. You should do work. You know, stay. Take sit ups. You know, whereas again, sit up, it's just really working a very superficial muscle. That's part of your core, yes, but that muscle is just to allow you to do this. You know, we can do this all day, but are you stable in your core doing that exercise? The answer yeah. is no. You know, that should be something you just do just to keep you know keep your your six pack going on but yeah the core the core is huge and for most people anybody who walks into the place and has uh you know take away an accident a very traumatic you know physical uh activity that has caused structural damage but anybody just walks in outside of that and like oh this hurts my back hurts or it hurts when i do this it hurts my brain immediately goes to core pelvic stability it all stems from there. Yep. All movement comes from that. All movement comes from there. You know, and not to mention the energy that we carry in there. You know, we're going to get a little metaphysical on you, but, you know, the chakra energy, um, the root energy, there's a, there's a, you know, your, your sure. center. And it's like a battery, you know, where your, your, your chi energy, your life sustaining energy is all in that area. So if there's stagnation in that area, if there's no movement in that area, that 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 energy has no way to expand and contract and go through its natural cycles. Mm -hmm. It's just a very, very important area. And it's just there's a lot of you know unawareness of that. I'm right on your page. Unfortunately, I learned it a little too late. <laughs> but try I'm personally never too, late, never too late. Yeah, just making up, you know, for, for lost time there. But what you're saying is so essential and it's i find that many people when they start working out they'll hit those muscles and they they haven't used them in so long and now there's fast fatigue so then they get frustrated it's like ah, oh, i gotta go to the gym ah. whereby yeah you can go to the gym you can do some ab exercises you can do flies you can work on your tries you know but those are essentially the uh you know mirror muscles that you're focusing on right that the ones that you think yeah. people are going to see. Meanwhile, yeah. you're ignoring all the important ones. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of where my work comes in. Um, yeah. I like addressing those, those, those little guys, the, the unseen guys, the, you know, the, the blue collar muscles. <laughs> <if you will. laughs> that's great. That's <laughs> great. Trenches, you yeah. know, keeping you moving and safe. Yeah. yeah. That, that is like, I'm going to share that with others because that's it. That it truly is what it is because the other ones like yeah. your, your triceps turn like, you know, yeah. uh, intentionally. In Hollywood muscles. Right. Right. <laughs> they're, they're, those are the, uh, you know, the, the vanity muscles where, you know, the other ones are really yeah. doing all the work for. Oh, sure. Yeah. Sure. There's but you can't with, ignore. They have work. They have work to do too. Like I said before, there's not one piece of your body that doesn't have a job to do. Not For one sure. piece. No, it's a very important message, you know, not to take anything for granted. And, you know, a lot of times um, I tell folks, watch, watch what you say. You know, you know, your words dictate your relationship with your body. If you're coming in here and you're like, oh, I'm getting old and it's just the way it is. And, you know, that's no good or I'm a mess and all that. It's like your body's always listening. I'm always using that line. Your body is always listening. And if that's what you say, and if you say it enough times, it's going gonna, it's gonna to become a belief. Now your body's going to give you what you believe. Right. It's, it's so true. It's important not to, take, not to take granted, to not take the fact that your body is your best but. And it's always got your back. Don't take don't don't take that for granted. Cherish so your true. body, cherish the temple, and you know do right by it, and it'll it'll do way better for you. And to the two of you, will just have a much more enriching experience in this world. It is so true. And when you say the body is listening, it's not just through your ears; it's picking up on the energy. So if you go to the gym. And maybe you're trying to, you know, work on those 
hip muscles, whatever it might be. And you say, oh, I'm not going to be, I, I can't do this. I can't do this. You're probably not going to be able to, if you reverse it and say, I'm going to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to barrel through it. I'm going to do that exercise and then I'm going to keep doing it. I feel you eventually well, will. It's the intention. Yeah. yeah. That's a really good point. And usually what happens in that case or those cases is the body kicks in. You know, it's the mind telling you, oh, I, I don't need to do this. I know I should do this, but I don't feel good. But you know, you know, intuitively that you should be doing this. The body's telling you, yeah, I need this, do it. And then once you get through that, those few seconds of where the mind's trying to talk you out of it, now you feel great. And you're like, oh my God, I'm so glad I did that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, you know, I, I, I tell people this, that you gotta, you can't let your mind talk you out of it. You know what you're supposed to do. When I'm doing my health coaching sessions, I'm like, you know, I, 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 trying to advise a little bit, which I'd like to talk about health coaching, you know, and what that looks like maybe in another show. But when your body knows what it, what it needs, you know, you feel it. We know everybody's walking around. They know. You don't have to Google it. You don't have anybody tell you. You know. Your mind will talk you out of it. When that moment comes and that decision is like, I should probably do this. If you don't do it in five seconds or so, your mind's going to talk you out of it. Yep. yep. You got to do it. So true. You got to put it in I appreciate how you have, you give so much clarity on all of this. So it's very easy to understand even the, if you will, the woo woo stuff that some, you know, others haven't really jumped into yet about the metaphysical part of it, about the, you know, the energy, the chi and all of that. Um, it all goes together. And once you, once you figure it out, game changer, Mark, how does somebody uh, find, find out more about uh, your center in Florida? Website is creating change LLC.com. And my phone number, I'm always available, is 727-519-8786. And on your website, everything we're talking about, there's detail on that. Thank you uh, so much for being here today. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Steve. Have a best Thank you. day ever. You too. We'll be right back. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.